According to Casey Johnson, we now know the asking price that the Chicago Bulls will have if they decide to go on and try to trade Zach Levine. We're going to talk about what that could mean, and especially for the Bulls' draft plans, all that and more, right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. If you want to follow the show, you can do so right off the top at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform. If you want to follow me personally, you can do so at CEO Hayes, that's CEO H A I Z E. But let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So, Casey Johnson recently released the, the expected um, return that the Bulls will be looking for back if they decide to trade Zach Levine. Now, this is I want to make sure this is prefaced by saying if they decide to move on from Zach Levine, but this is really starting to be a little bit similar to kind of the situation that we found Jimmy Butler in about a decade ago, right? Where I have long ago it was, it feels like it was forever, but um, is that we heard little bits of rumblings and then the Chicago Bulls went out, they got Ray, Ray John Rondo, they got Dwayne Wade, and then, you know, it started picking back up after that. And so ultimately, I'm not saying that I think that the Bulls are going to move Zach Levine, but I do think that they are rightfully so trying to see what they can get. And if they do decide to get to move on from Zach, they want to make sure that they get a package back that is indicative of how they value Zach Levine. And so with KC Johnson talking on that, they uh, the Bulls will want back multiple first round picks, right? They would want a good young player back and they'd want salary cap filler on top of that. So when you really look at what that means is that's that's similar to what the Bulls did in setting their asking price for Alice Caruso, which he was ultimately not moved, and we did find out they didn't actually want to move him. But if somebody is going to try to entice the Bulls to move Zach Levine, that is what they that is at the minimum what they want back. And so, you know, with the parity around the NBA, there are a lot of teams that we talked about, right? They are going to convince themselves that they are not as far away as what they may realistically be. And you may see teams that do forego bringing in young players a la the Portland Trailblazers that want a more proven asset so that they can try to run it back and compete. Now, Portland, outside the playoffs, I don't think that they, uh, well, you never know. They may be able to convince themselves that they make the right set of moves that they can get into championship-level contention. But ultimately, when you look at, uh, like, the Trailblazers, uh, the Hawks may be another team, like uh, the Dallas Mavericks, of course, as we know, they are trying to get as much talent around Luka as possible. Um, the Clippers, like there are a lot of teams that could be looking around, surveying the the, the landscape and thinking, uh, what can we get? What? How can we go about adding a, a huge influx of talent before the 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 ne- next off season when that new uh, 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 salary cap rule kicks into place, where if you're in that sec- second apron, you can't aggregate salaries, you can't take back more salary in a trade, you can't. I think it's even taken away some some of the exceptions and and things like that. So ultimately. Here's where we sit right now. And and AK, if he's a good GM, should be surveying the landscape and and seeing what's out there for any and every player. And that includes Zach Levine. And in that case, um, this is what they want back. Now, I don't think that they're likely to get it. And I don't think that they're actively shopping Zach Levine either. I think that this is a, hey, we're going to set this tone. If you're going to call us about Zach, don't call us if if it's anything less than that. Now, there are some teams that absolutely could fit that criteria and that may be looking to do that. And ultimately, right now, heading into the draft, right, we have the draft coming up in two days on Thursday, and the Bulls' biggest storyline heading into the draft is what is the future of Zach Levine on this team? And it's it's one that you have to ask yourself the question, if the Bulls truly do see a Scoot Henderson being the, the player that they want to build around going forth into the future, it, it, they, they may be looking to move Zach. And so, I still think it's unlikely that a move happens. I still think that it's unlikely that a Zach Levine trade happens at all here this season. Again, I told you guys in the next couple of seasons, though, if the Bulls don't get close to making an ECF or look like they're a team that's making moves in the playoffs, do not do not be surprised if moves start happening. But ultimately, right now, I don't necessarily expect it. I would love to be surprised. Not to say that I'd love to see Zach move. I don't want to see Zach move. But if the Bulls actually pick a direction, right? Um then, you know, that's the direction that we finally know that we're going. All the woulda, coulda, shouldas could stop, right? And we now can move forward in that new direction. But I think ultimately, when you look at the signings, uh, the fact that the Bulls are probably expected to re-sign Nikola Vucevic now, that all points to more a running it all back scenario. Now, that does not mean that even signing a, Nik- a Nikola Vucevic back 
uh, removes the Bulls' chances of making a big move in the draft because it doesn't. But ultimately, I do think that if Vooch is re-signed, that means that they are running back this unit and they're going to try to go at it again, right? And maybe wait till Ball's contract comes up off the books so they can have a little bit more flexibility. DeMar's contract could come off the books at that point as well. So, you know, it, it really it really depends. And I know yesterday we had an episode talking about Vooch's contract. And I saw a lot of you guys in the comments just talking about how, you know, that Vooch deal to you signifies that DeMar could be moved. And it doesn't necessarily mean that either. Right now where the Bulls sit, regardless of whatever. And I know, uh, shout out, I, there was a a, a, a a viewer on the YouTube side that, like, had this whole cooked up scenario as far as, like, well, the Bulls, they did this move for Vooch now because it removes the cap hold, and then they're going to re-sign Io and Kobe at their qualifying. No. The, the, what the Bulls are doing, they're going to try to re-sign their talent. A, Kobe White ain't coming back on just the qualifying offer. I can tell you that right now. Right? Now, Io may come back on the qualifying offer. He is actually candidate to come back on the qualifying offer to bet on himself considering the unique situation that he's in. But uh, Kobe White, Nikola Vucevic, both are probably going to be re-signed. And if they are, that does not leave the Bulls a lot of flexibility under that luxury tax to really maneuver and bring in talent. We know that, right? That is one of the reasons why I do hope that the Bulls, you know, are talking with Portland about potentially just removing the protections on their fu- on the future picks and getting that number 23 overall pick because at that point, you're not really giving up anything. You're giving up your protections. Adds more flexibility to Portland. We're getting a first-round pick back now in a draft that is pretty deep. And you can find some really solid talent lower in this draft as well. And I hope that that's what the Bulls are at least doing to get it, get some more young talent. If the Bulls do end up looking to go rebuild or whatever else later down the road, that young talent you would hope uh, develops at that point, right, is still somebody who can be part of that future. And so ultimately, right now, where the Bulls sit is at the same place they always sit, right? Uh, the Fisher rumor uh, aside and all the other rumors aside, the Bulls do not let that confuse you or let you think that anything has really changed with this Bulls team because it hasn't. The plan is still the plan. The outline is still the outline and this and it's still the most likely scenario that this team is going to be running it all back. Now, the biggest question is w- running it all back with what type of additions, right? Are they going to be running it back with a pick that they get at number 23 or lower in the first round? Are they going to be running it back with an acquisition of point guard or a shooter or a big that they get with that mid-level exception. But outside of that, those things, this team is primarily going to stay the same. And Javante Green is probably not going to be re-signed. Dalen Terry's probably going to get more minutes. Hopefully, let's knock on wood and hope that the Rook is, well, going into now his second season is ready. But ultimately, the same questions that exist around the Bulls are going to continue to exist until they actually make a move that signifies one way or another, or they start winning at a level that then those questions can stop And you can start focusing on just constantly adding to the team, which may be what they're doing regardless. But the Bulls situation, as it stands right now, to me, and in how I view this thing, and like I've told you guys before, pay attention to when some of these rumors start up. Like, pay attention to when some of these articles start happening. It's usually around the dead time. It's usually around the time period where there's not nothing else going on around the NBA. And also, sometimes, now Casey Johnson is a valid source, right? We... We pretty much trust Casey Johnson. He's not always right on the rumors or uh, the things that he talks about happens, but he's he's locked in and, and kind of knows the mindset behind the team, the front office, things like that. He's been around this team long enough. Um, and so I, I believe that that's the Bulls' asking price. I just don't believe that they're shopping him, as the Fisher uh, article said. So ultimately, like I said, not much has changed with the Chicago Bulls team, in my opinion, and I don't expect it to change much over the course of the season. Now, we are heading towards the NBA draft, which is going to be fun. Make sure you guys are also subscribed to NBA Central as we'll be going live during that during the draft. So make sure you guys are tuned in for that one. We'll be breaking down everything, not just Bulls, the general NBA channel. But with that said, heading into the draft now, with the focus kind of being on Zach Levine, and many people now thinking that the Bulls' chances of trading into this draft may be directly correlated with trading Zach Levine. I don't necessarily think that, right? But I do think that this team is still looking to make a move into this into this draft. And so we've been off and on covering potential draft prospects for the Chicago Bulls uh, here on this channel. And we're going to continue that today. One player we're going to talk about today is Tracy Jackson Davis. This is a 6'9", 245-pound power forward slash center out of Indiana. This guy, he's uh, drawn comparisons to J- Jalen Williams and Trey Lyles. Uh, he stepped up big time last season, right? Becoming one of the more productive 
and active players in the country. He's an explosive athlete with that leaping ability. He has, he has a good second leap as well, getting back in uh, of rebounding. Uh, listen, and the way that he really looks at how to break down defenses from that high post and in being a playmaker in the pick and roll as well, listen, he has great vision. And again, he's a, he's a, a person that could potentially bring that point forward type uh, skill set, right? Um, he doubled his assist numbers uh, from, from the prior year into this year. He's an elite shot blocker and rim protector, right? So when you look at some of the things that the Bulls need, rim protection, rebounding, he brings that hugely, right? And th- like I said before, he ranked fourth in Division I at 2.9 blocks per game. He has a 33-inch standing vertical. He's an outstanding screener as well on the pick and roll. He creates shots out of isolation plays, which as a power forward is a major asset on top of that. 7-1 wingspan, which we know AK loves the wingspans, and he has a bag of post moves. He gets in his bag operating in the low post on either shoulder area of that. His long arms allows him to do the spins, the kind of push uh, 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 layups and things like that, and hook shots as well. And he has the athleticism to also slam it on people's heads and take players off the, uh, off the first step, right? He averaged 2.8 offensive rebounds a game in his fourth year. And this guy just, he, and he doesn't get in foul trouble. He's a smart, high IQ basketball player. He was a senior at Indiana. So you expect him to be able to make the floor early. He's coming into this draft 23 years old. He'll actually turn 24 in February. So a little bit older of a player. But when you look at some of the things that the Bulls need right away, I love it. Now, as far as his weaknesses, three-point shooting, don't even worry about it. He's not going to shoot very much. He hasn't shown much development in that area. It doesn't mean that if you have a shooting coach, what the Bulls now do, maybe you can't coach him into being somebody who can knock down consistently an open three-point shot because he could do. He could turn into that. When you look at his work ethic, even his shot release, there's some promise to maybe he can turn in. Look at what, for example, like a player like Brooke Lopez turned into as a three-point shooter, right? He's he 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 didn't attempt a single three pointer his senior season, though, even though he was working on it. But as I've said before, sometimes when players work on things, you don't see it immediately that next season. So it's something that he's working on. He went 0 for 3 for his career from three point range. Again, 23 years old, which could be seen as a negative with how old he's coming into this draft. But overall, the size, the ability to take players off the dribble, the post moves, the 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 true rim protection that he brings as well. At number 23 or in late in the first round, I actually like this guy a lot. Tracy Jackson Davis uh, out of Indiana. Make sure you guys have him on your draft board because I like this guy. Again, comes in at a position of need as well for the Chicago Bulls. And he's somebody that you can expect to maybe produce for you day one. Now, he's not going to give you any three-point shooting, right? You get that from P. Will. But I do see a future in which if the Bulls do end up tra- uh, drafting Jackson Davis, that he absolutely can be maybe a starting four eventually. He can definitely be a damn good change of pace for to come off your bench and an energy. He's basically, all intents and purposes, he doesn't shoot the ball as well, but he brings that same level of energy that Javante Green brings with a different, with a way better size profile that is more indicative of a power forward in the NBA. And when you look at that rim protection as well, I like the idea of this guy next to Nikola Vucevic in some lineups and even next to P. Will, if you want to go small ball five, with with uh, Jackson Davis. I really like this guy a lot overall. You guys can let me know what you think on him. I'll, I'll probably have some videos overplaying on top of this as, as I'm talking about him on the video, but really like this kid's skill set. I like him overall, and I wouldn't be mad if the Bulls do select him if they get into the end of that first round, but that is pretty much it for today, guys. We are rocking and rolling, heading straight towards the draft, and we'll continue to monitoring and seeing what this team is doing. It's been very quiet around the Kobe White front as well with the Chicago Bulls, and I expect that to be because they're going to let the market dictate Kobe White's price. He's going to probably be in a similar situation as Zach Levine was, so don't be surprised if Kobe White signs an offer sheet with another team, but the Bulls always are going to plan to match that, but they may just, rather than getting into back and forth, let the market dictate that value and just match that value as long as you see um, it fitting in. And so um, it could be costly for the Bulls. It could end up paying off. Zach Levine was on a very reasonable deal with the time we let him go out and find his own deal. And so it could be something similar with Kobe White as well, I think, in the future. So ultimately, right now, where we sit with this team, like I said before, and I said at the top of the show, nothing much has changed as far as the outlook. Things are still the things. The plan is still the plan, right? And I think that as we go forward, um, and, you know, free agency opens up um, in 10 days now on the 30th of June, 
uh, uh, free agents can officially start signing contracts on the 7th of July. We are, we are, everything's going to start rocking and rolling here fast. And we're going to know what this outlook of this Bulls team is going to be going into the next season here in basically the next week or so, right? It's not going to take too much to, for us to know. And again, the Bulls have not filed for any type of exceptions with Lonzo Ball. So do not expect those to come the time that it'll take those to get approved. Um, free agents will probably be off the board by now. So because the Bulls did not file for that, they're probably not going to file for it this season. It's still an option next season as well. But ultimately, that's where the Bulls sit right now, right? That's that's what's going on. We'll continue to monitor. You already know. We'll, we'll, we'll be the first to drop as news drops. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.